हेलो एवरीवन ग्रीटिंग्स ऑफ द डे आई एम डॉक्टर लता रानी आई एम वर्किंग एज एन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एंड प्रोग्राम एंकर ऑफ बैंकिंग फाइनेंशियल सर्विस एंड इंश्योरेंस डिपार्टमेंट एट डेली स्किल एंड एंटरप्रन्योरशिप यूनिवर्सिटी न्यू डेली टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फ्री कंसेंट the word free is very important we all are attracted towards this free somewhere in the mall if i see that you get this at this price and you will get this as free that catches the attention so everybody all of us are inclined towards this word free though we know nothing is free not even the oxygen that we are inhaling so free consent is one of the essential element as per section 10 of indian contract act now when we talk of this free consent we need to understand these two words independently and then we come as collaborative cohesive of these two words the word free is which is available for the usage for the consumption and there is no cost involved consent is something where we are assented to so there is offerer and offeree so if both are agreeing on to something assenting towards each other then that word makes consent so consent is derived from consultation have you consulted him have you consulted her have have he agreed upon have he she denied upon so consent is taken from the consultation so consent is something that we derive we exert we are availing it we are going to understand all these under the session under the topic called free consent now when we say free consent that is defined as Indian Contract Act 1872 Free consent is basically consensus ad idem where the mind of two people who are entering into a contract are making the same interpretation so we are going to understand when consent is not free under the consideration of coercion undue influence fraud misrepresentation and mistake of fact so all have the specific sections ranging from section 13 to section 22 coercion falls under the section 15 undue influence falls under the section 16 fraud under the section 17 and misrepresentation under the section 18 mistake have three sections section 20 21 and 22 we would talk about free consent but before this many of us take consent and free consent as same though it is not I'll be starting my session with the word called consent. I'll be trying to explain the difference between consent and free consent. So as such when we talk of consent it occurs when one person voluntarily agrees to the proposal. Word voluntarily is very important or desires of another. So it is something that i am agreeing to the proposal or the offer 
so when we talk of just inviting a person to a party and he agrees it is consent so consent is voluntarily you are agreeing on those things so if somebody is inviting you to a party and you candidly say yes it is consent so consent is when you are agreeing on to the another so if some 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 charity show is going on they have invited you to give a counseling session to the students you agree to that proposal it is consent so consent is the agreement of to the proposal of to the offer or you are agreeing on to be part of that desire of another but in the indian contract act the definition of consent is given as it is when two or more persons agree upon the same thing and in the same sense so that means that is where consent is lying so i am not talking about free consent as of now i am speaking and i am explaining the word consent so when both parties agree upon same thing in the same manner in the same sense in the same interpretation that is where consent is okay that means if there are two friends one of the friend have one flat and one villa so that friend wants to sell one of the flat he talks to his friend and friend says yes yes i am very much interested so friend a wanted to sell a flat but friend b understood it as a villa that it means consent is missing because friend a wanted to sell just a flat and friend b understood that he is selling his villa so selling a flat versus purchasing a villa is not matching with each other so same thing is not there same sense is not there same interpretation is not there when all these same are not matching then there is no consent when consent is not there it is again void from the beginning i would like to mention the case of raffles versus vishals two parties that is a and b entered into a contract for the sale of 125 cotton bales by a ship named peerless from bombay so the there were two ships with the same name party a was thinking of one ship and party b was thinking of another ship so thinking mismatched when thinking mismatched so there was no meeting of minds so the contract is invalid because they are not thinking in terms of same thing in terms of same sense or deriving the same interpretation so that contract is lacking consent so we use the word there is no consent available from this case from this scenario we will not say there is no free consent we will just use the word consent is not there consent is lagged consent is not visible or there is no meeting of minds so when minds are not meeting in a same manner then consent is lacking contract is invalid nobody can sue challenge each other in the court so consent means agree to do something or to the desire of another to give permission so consent is just when a parent is signing on a permission slip to allow his or her child to go on a trip to go on a field trip to go on a picnic trip that is consent like i mentioned in the beginning 
consent and free consent are taken as one whereas they are not one the meaning of consent and free consent seems to be similar but there is a difference so difference is of elements so elements of consent are limited to a similar purpose to make meeting the minds so we are thinking in a same manner with the same sense with the same interpretation whereas consent of free consent is something where we are going to say that the consent is not prejudiced not biased not obtained by these five scenarios number 1 coercion number 2 undue influence number 3 fraud number 4 misrepresentation of facts and number 5 mistake so when we are considering these five scenarios consent becomes free that means that is not induced that is not obtained from these mechanisms void yes when there is no contract in terms of no consent it is voidable it is void whereas a grieved party under the case of free consent has a choice they may make contract valid or they may make contract void so it is voidable at the option of aggrieved party so when i say consent and free consent consent in something which is making the minds meeting the minds thinking in the same manner free consent is when consent is not obtained from the mechanism of coercion undue influence misrepresentation mistake and fraud so what is free consent let us define free consent as the contract based on section 3 of the indian contract act 1872 meaning of free consent is an agreement between two parties for the same purpose with a union of thoughts that means the principle of concessus ad idem applies that means the concept of meeting the minds thinking in the same manner performing in the same manner understanding the terms and conditions in the same manner will be making it as free consent if it is not induced by coercion undue influence fraud misrepresentation and mistake of facts let us understand one example that there are two parties a e and b a had some financial crisis you know pandemic hit financial crisis number of sectors have shown disturbed performance few were the sectors which were stuck like hotel sector hospitality sector they were stuck for some time so a had some financial crisis so he wants to make a contract here b is aware of his position b knows that a is suffering from the financial crisis but b wants to accept the contract then in that case contract is made with a mutual consent to have certain funds exchange there is a free consent available so b knew that the position of a is not strong it is not financially strong i am supplying the funds i am agreeing to supply the funds so this is mutual consent obtained so there is no fraud no cheating a has not 
given any false promises right so when the consent is mutual in that case this is the contract this is the example taken from the free consent so that is nothing but free consent of the contract so free consent and consent have to be understood consent is just meeting of minds when we are thinking and performing in the same manner as the front person wants us to explain so that is where free consent is leviable so consent is equal to meeting of minds free consent is equal to meeting of minds plus no case of no obtainment of coercion undue influence fraud misrepresentation or mistake so when any of these things are taken up in the contract then the consent is not free consent is not said to be free contract is not valid it is invalid or in a very specific legal language it is voidable so consent is said to be free if it is not induced by coercion undue influence misrepresentation mistake and fraud very very important first is coercion what is coercion yes it is look at the picture where somebody is threatening a person so if this is the scenario where you are using some unlawful means some illegal weapons to enter into a contract then that is where consent is not free so coercion is when a person unlawfully threatens or forces a person via some forbidden acts that leads to coercion forbidden acts is any prohibited acts by ipc indian penal code so it means one of the party is actually forcing another person to enter into a contract so coercion is basically threatening so you are using your physical force to get the contract signed to make the party performing for that contract let's say there is one mr a he has kidnapped one child mr a is calling the child parents see you have to do my two jobs so that i could send your child back to your home so number 1 is send an amount of 5 crore second i would some some sort of supply would be given to you and you have to supply to the another person so two work let's say, take an example and the parents of the child agree that means giving the amount as well as supplying of the material so in that case there is a physical force there is a mental pressure is given so commitment is taken as a result if commitment is taken forcefully then that is the case of coercion so you are using a physical force to get the contract signed to make the person fulfilling the norms fulfilling the contract in that case that effect of this coercion leads to cancellation of the entire contract 
but there is a investigation authority who will investigate the case but let me tell you coercion is where person speak up against the incident so once parents of the child perform the contract give the amount and supply the material and once they receive their child they approach to the police okay, this thing has happened so then the matter of investigation starts and the action is taken against the person who has used physical force so you could see this picture where person is at gun point to perform the contract to perform for the contract so we can easily assess that the contract is not valid the mechanism to use the obtain the concept is not free so free consent is when there is no coercion so if any of such contract is created with the help of physical force then the contract is falling under the purview of coercion so coercion means forcing an individual to enter into a contract so you are using a physical force to obtain the consent of the party coercion may involve the actual infliction of physical and psychological harm in order to enhance the credibility of a threat so threat of further harming can lead to person's cooperation obedience consent performing for you so you have used a physical force to make contract and to perform a person with a contract let's say a person z calls up mr b and says he he is aware that i am going to kill you if you are not going to let my cousin house out on a rent so even if he pays the consideration but the force that is being used is physical force is coercion is part of coercion so no matter if z a b all are attaining the age of majority no matter if they are paying the consideration paying the rent but what matters is z has called up if you will not give if you will not let out your flat to mr b i will kill you so using the physical force that z is giving a house on let out to b will make it as coercion let's take an another example a went out for a walk b approaches a with a stranger he pulls out his gun and ask a to give all his possessions here the consent of a is obtained by coercion so coercion is very clear that is a person is using physical force to threaten another person to obtain the consent for the contract so as such coercion is clear examples are clear let us understand how coercion is going to impact the contract when we talk of coercion the effect of coercion is voidable contract contract is void at the option of a grieved party if a grieved party speaks up against it then it is void if party does not speak up it is valid so it is voidable 
voidable at the option of aggrieved party. Talking about coercion, it is also known as duress in English law. So duress is when the consent, when the concessors or assent or agreement is made between two parties under the force, physical force. So physical force is very, very important that should be investigated, proofs are aligned and action is taken up. So like I said, there is Mr. A who has called up parents of kidnapped child. So there must be a proof of the call number one, recording of that conversation number two and then obviously approaching to the police and lodging an FIR. So then investigation starts. So coercion is using the physical force and giving the pressure to accept the contract, to accept the terms and conditions of the contract. It is voidable and it cannot be converted into valid. Even if there is a consideration, there is attainment of age of majority, but the object that is not legal. So that makes illegal contract. So as far as free consent is concerned and consent is concerned, we have taken up the case of coercion that falls under section 15 of Indian Contract Act 1872. Coercion is the first that we have discussed under the category of free consent. So we have understood consent where parties are agreeing voluntarily and we have understood free consent. That means free consent which is not obtained by using any of these methods. That is coercion, undue influence, fraud, misrepresentation and mistakes. So with this, I am ending up here and I believe the concept of consent, free consent and coercion is clear to you. Thank you. Thank you so much.